psychic with a T, the psychic with a T, that's me, that's me. The one with the T, the one with the T, that's me, that's me. When the planets align, spirit speaks on time, that's me, that's me. When the planets align, spirit speaks on time, that's me, that's me. When the trolls be gone, candle work be strong, that's me, that's me. When the trolls be gone, candle work be strong, that's me, that's me. I don't care what the others say, let's channel some energy today. I don't care what the others say, let's channel some energy today. Capricorn, Virgo, Libra strong, this tarot card reading about to be long. Capricorn, Virgo, Libra strong, this tarot card reading about to be long. Hi everyone, welcome to my psychic energy channeling on Cleopatra part two, part dos, okay? Thank you for listening and watching. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you like the video and when you subscribe, of course, make sure you hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you get all notifications every time I go live or upload a brand new video. If you want to see part three of this video, all right, make sure you um, hit the Vimeo channel, my second channel on Vimeo. The link should be in the description box below or it should be in the comment section below. And you can purchase or rent part two of this video, or you can also hit the join button on YouTube and become a member of my YouTube channel. And um, you can get exclusive access to content that I don't post for the regular public to see, such as part three of this reading, okay? So thank you for listening and watching, and also if you want a personal reading, of course, check out my website, lamartownsendtarot.com. I am available for readings, and I would love to read for you. I do do astrology, natal chart, birth chart readings. I also do psychic tarot readings, energy channelings, and more, all right? And I'm also a medium. So with that being said, um, make sure you also follow me on my TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you to those who are following me on all those platforms. My handle on all those platforms is at Lamar Townsend Tarot, spelled just like my YouTube name and my website, no spaces in between, okay? So, welcome to part two of my psychic reading on Cleopatra. A couple months ago, we did um, a psychic, well, I did a psychic reading on Cleopatra that you all seem to love completely. Um, it was a big hit with all of you, so I figured that I would come and do a part two and see what else we can pick up on Cleopatra. I know that in the part one reading, we at least I picked up on some deep, dark things about Cleopatra that I definitely did not expect to see, and I don't necessarily remember what I've said in that reading, by the way, because that was a couple months ago. I don't even remember when I put out that reading, um, and I've probably done like hundreds, if not a th thousands of readings by then, you know, in the form of other readings on YouTube, you know, on, um, on Vimeo and for my members. And then I have my personal readings I do. So it's been a lot going on. But let's go ahead and get into part two of the Cleopatra energy channeling psychic reading. Let's go ahead and cleanse the energy of this space so we can get a good reading on Cleopatra. And let's say a quick prayer for protection. Okay. Thank you for cleansing and clearing the energy of this deck from any past readings. Or thank you for cleansing and clearing the energy of this space from any past readings. Thank you for opening up the channel so that I can get a good reading on Cleopatra. Thank you for allowing us to get deeper into her life. Thank you for allowing us to see what you would like us to see. Father God, thank you for allowing me to be your mouthpiece. Thank you for speaking through me in the name of Jesus. Thank you for protecting my energy, my thoughts, my mind, and my emotions. Thank you for protecting the energy, thoughts, minds, and emotions of those who are watching this video. And thank you for just allowing the portals to be closed once this reading is over. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. I know in part one we talked about how Cleopatra was into witchcraft. 
but I do see her working specifically when it comes to witchcraft. I see her working with lightning and water. So in the sense of Orishas, I think water would be associated with the Yemeya or like Oshun, for example, which would be the beauty aspect of Cleopatra, right? Um, and I think Oshun and Cleopatra are often like associated with one another, right? And then, um, but I think lightning is a Chosi maybe, or is it um, Chango? Or is Chango fire? But there's something about it's interesting to me, like, either way, I think, or is lightning associated with, um, who's lightning associated with in terms of the Orishas? But either way, I feel like, um, Cleopatra has this element to her where she's both masculine and feminine. She has both masculine and feminine energies within her. So I feel like what that tells me is that she had strong either first house energy the first house rules masculinity, which is Mars, Aries, or she had strong Mars or Aries energy in her chart. Because she comes across as very dominant, wouldn't be surprised if she had like a Mars and Scorpio, because Scorpio is co-ruled by Aries, mainly ruled by Pluto, right? But she also had this very dark, like, witchy vibe to her, which could be, you know, that Scorpio-Pluto influence. Pluto rules death, rebirth, it also rules the occult. So I do think there's something there where I think she had strong masculine and feminine energies energies within her. And I think when it came to her spells, her witchcraft, her magic, she worked with water. Because I see her with like a basin and she's at the water. And I keep hearing Manile, so maybe she specifically used water from the Nile River. I don't know if it was called the Nile back then, but something about the Nile River. I do see her working like with like water associated with, with that. Um, and also working with lightning in some way, shape, or form. So, I do feel like the Egyptians saw lightning as a very magical kind of thing. Um, so I think, like, it's almost like I feel like the Egyptians saw lightning as, like, a message from the gods. Or, like, um, the gods communicating with them, I feel like. So it's like, maybe, for example, they did a ritual where they, you know, asked the gods for, um... I don't know, like, um, success in triumph in a war, you know, and they end up winning, winning the war. It's like the lightning would be seen as like a, a, like a message of celebration, for example, from the gods or something like that. Like, that's what it feels like to me. So I think there's something, and I think there's something about working with lightning in Cleopatra's lineage. So I don't know what that like stems from, but I'm wondering if there is a connection between Cleopatra or a connection with the Egyptians and the Orishas. Because I keep seeing something about the Orishas. I keep seeing Oshun. So I'm wondering if Oshun and like Cleopatra are connected in some way. Like I think I think Oshun is just a deity correct me if i'm wrong or was she technically a woman or a person who actually roamed the earth at some point i ask because i keep seeing this connection between oshun and cleopatra so i'm thinking either the african religion of the orishas or i don't know if it's necessarily even african because i'll say the ethnic the person of color, you know, tradition of the Orishas, I'm wondering if maybe there's a connection to Cleopatra or the Egyptians. And like, maybe we, we knowingly or unknowingly intertwine or use the image or likeness of Cleopatra in, in Oshun, for example, to be, you know, one another respectively but at the same time I feel like if these were two separate people because I feel like Cleopatra definitely roamed the earth at some point like she was definitely living alive on this same earth that we are on at this in this present you know time but I'm like wondering if Oshun was also a human you know humanoid person living on earth at some point as well because I do see a woman Literally, like, the image she's depicted as, like, kind of holding a pot, holding a basin. 
Um, and why is this like becoming like an African Orisa Osun reading now? And she does like have honey in her pot or some type of like sweet mixture. But I actually feel like even there's some there's definitely similarities between Oshun and Cleopatra. Because I feel like even Cleo, even Oshun is working similar to Cleopatra with the water. And I feel like the honey that Oshun is associated with is actually um a reference to the magic Oshun would have done in her waking life. And the honey would be like, remember how I was saying, like, when it comes to Cleopatra, there's this whole thing with, like, lightning and water. Um, with Oshun, it's honey and water. The honey being, like, a an offering for the deities that live, that reside in the wa the water. That's what I feel. I say all this to say, if Oshun and Cleopatra were two separate entities that were alive at some point living on the same earth as humanoids or humans i feel like they cross paths at some point and hear me when i say this i could be crazy i could be an legend i think when i say they cross paths i don't think they lived in the same time frame i think that or maybe they did but there's something where i think at some point maybe for example the same land that cleopatra roamed or the same land that uh Oshun roamed you know the same land that Cleopatra roamed I feel like at some point Oshun roamed that same land or the same land that Oshun roamed I feel like Cleopatra roamed that same land does that make sense so it's like if going going back to the Nile River if Cleopatra was working with the, the water of the Nile River and her magic like I was seeing I feel like Oshun did the same thing working with the water of the Nile River in her waking life. That's what I feel, because Cleopatra's showing me Oshun, and I'm like, why am I seeing Oshun? I think she's also kind of referencing to me that, like, I think either the Egyptians were black, were definitely brown-skinned people, like me, and maybe you watching this video, but, um... Because she keeps saying we're similar, like... Me and Oshun were similar. Me and these people were similar. That's what I feel. I'm wondering if... or I uh, see, I almost said Oshun. I'm wondering if Cleopatra had children because I do see children. Because I think Cleopatra was like Oshun, but she was wanting to work her way up to Yemeya meaning the mother of children, motherhood, um, the protector of the youth, the young people. That's what I feel. And I'm wondering, was Cleopatra, like, th thrown in water? Or she must have been mummified. She had to have been mummified, but there is something about her with water. There's something about her in water. I'm wondering if her body was thrown in a river, but I think at the same time her body was mummified and was she was she put in a tomb maybe, but I see something with water being thrown in water. Maybe this is her throwing someone else in water, someone else's body in water, or instructing other people to throw someone else's body in water, but there's something about her in a connection to water. If she has a tomb, maybe it's like her tomb at some point became over flooded or something like that. Because there's something about water, karma with water. Like, I feel like this may sound crazy too. I feel like she was supposed to die in water. Don't know why. Don't know why that's so significant, but I see something like that. Because now I'm seeing Yemeya, which is the depths of the ocean, which would be the body falling to the depths. Yemeya embracing the body. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Anyway. Um. And I, yeah, I think the whole water thing had something to do with karma. Because if you rem remember me saying in parts one of my Cleopatra reading. what? How much time do we have? Okay. If you remember me saying in my part one Cleopatra reading, I was talking about how like she. She was actually quite vicious Cleopatra. She killed a lot of people. 
Um, she was quite savage and unapologetic and, you know, the, the murders of the people she killed and things like that. And she would do some really dark, demonic shit, basically. You know, crap. Gotta keep it PC for YouTube. But, um, she got payback in the form of her death. Or she was supposed to get payback in the form of her death. I think she got payback somehow in the form of her death, but it was supposed to involve water. And if she didn't die by the hands of water, it's like her body, her 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 body, her dead body was either thrown in water, thrown in a river, a body of ocean, or like her tomb at some point, and this may be undocumented, became over flooded, but I feel like it was something to rectify karma. Don't know what that means. So anyway. Um I feel like Cleopatra may have it reincarnated as a, a human, but not a human in power, actually. Because there's something about in her next lifetimes after Cleopatra, in her lifetimes after Cleopatra, where she once again had to, has to, because she may be alive currently in another life, life form, you know, in another life, she had to pay for, like, what she did as Cleopatra. She did some dark stuff as Cleopatra. And I see her as, like, a woman, a young woman, born in a, a family of poverty or, you know, lower classism. And she, like, she feels, like, deep down, like, you know, I should be the queen of the world. I'm so smart. I'm so talented. I'm so beautiful. Why was I born into this family, you know, of poor people, of people with no initiative, of, you know, this idiot father and idiot mother? She still kind of has that essence of Cleopatra where she, like, very confident and very alpha, you know, but in a beta body, in a, in a beta environment. That's what I feel. So there, there is something where I feel like she's reincarnated a few times. Um, but I don't know why I feel like there is something where I think Cleopatra's reincarnated in this lifetime as we speak. Hmm. There's a certain celebrity I keep seeing. And I don't want to say her name for fear of sounding so cliche. So I think I'm actually going to save this for part two of maybe the celebrity and why I keep seeing this celebrity. Because I'm wondering if she is a reincarnate of Cleopatra. It sounds so far-fetched, but not really. Hmm. Or if there's a connection to Cleopatra and this woman I'm seeing. There could be, actually. There actually could be. All right, I'm going to not spoil it for you. I'm actually going to save that for part two. Some of you probably already know who it is. Um, I'm not going to give you any spoilers. If you want to see part, or not part two, part three of this reading where I talk more about Cleopatra and maybe who I see her reincarnating as or connected to in some way. May not, I don't know. We'll get into it in part three, all right? Um, if you want to see part three, hit the join button to become a member of my YouTube channel, all right? Um, so you can get exclusive access to content such as part three of this reading. Or you can check out my Vimeo channel and purchase or rent this video, part three of this video, um, and check it out there. If you are going to purchase part three on this uh, of this video, go ahead and make sure you hit the follow button on my Vimeo as well. 
Anyways, also make sure if you want a personal reading, check out my website, lamartownsintero.com. I am available for readings and I would love to read for you. Remember, I do astrology, natal chart, birth chart readings. I also do psychic tarot readings, energy channeling readings just like this. I do read tarot cards. I'm a jack of all trades when it comes to spirituality and the occult. All right. With that being said, I'm going to go get into part three of this reading. Make sure you also follow me on my Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And this has been fun. Until the next one, love and light, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you subscribe if you're new or I'll see you for your own personal reading. Either way, I'll see you soon. It's your choice.